Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. After the debacle of the U-turn of the gender bill and the probable U-turn on the deposit return scheme, it seems that the leadership of the SNP are being forced into yet another third embarrassing U-turn in three days. This time it's about allowing press and public into the hustings for the leadership challenge with the three candidates coming out eventually and saying that the press should be allowed there. In fact, Kate Forbes was the first to call for it almost immediately uh, after realising it looked really bad. The other two kind of went along with it eventually. But why do they want the press banned? Is it because the press may ask difficult questions or show the three candidates up to be complete morons? Well, yes, that's exactly what it is. But let's look at this article. Now, I say two and a half because all three of them initially uh, said that they didn't want press there. Uh, but Kate Forbes almost immediately changed her mind when she realised there was a potential um, backlash because it seemed to be, what are they hiding? So she did actually come out very, very quickly and suggest that the press should be there. Uh, but now all three of them have reluctantly, and it must be said very reluctantly, uh, agreed that press will be there to see what they are doing, what they are saying uh, and holding them to account. Because of course, this isn't an internal matter. This isn't something that is of interest only to SNP members who are picking their leader. This, of course, is a national issue for all Scots because whoever wins is likely to be the first minister. Uh, and so there should be no secrets. Things should be open and transparent. Uh, and any politician who says that things shouldn't be open and transparent is obviously dodgy, shall we say, uh, obviously doesn't want uh, that bright, the bright light of uh, press intrusion looking too deeply into his business, into his doings. And you have to ask why they didn't initially say, oh yes, the press are invited. Why did they want it secret? But anyway, the SNP is forced into humiliating U-turn, another one, um, because they've already U-turned on the gender bill, they've already U-turning on the... Um, the deposit scheme and now another U-term. Obviously, these people are just turning around in circles all day, aren't they? Uh, anyway, another humiliating U-turn over plan for a secret leadership hustings as Kate Forbes and other candidates running to replace Nicola Sturgeon as Scotland's First Minister demand that they're open to media and the public. Because otherwise, there will be allegations of secret deals of, you know, not, you know, these these. How can we, a stitch up almost like if you drop this and I'll do this and we'll get that person in and things like that. Uh, if it's not open, it's not above board, um, it is always going to be deeply, deeply suspect. <clears throat> but everything, everything to do with the SNP is deeply, deeply suspect. Where's the 600,000, Nicola? Kate Forbes, Ash Regan and Hamza Yousaf face off in Cumbernauld next week. I'd love to see a face off. Uh, but then they've still got a few spare, haven't they? Because they, um, they are not just two-faced, these people. They are many-faced. Said the party's ruling NEC said on Tuesday the events were designed to be a safe space. Safe for whom? You don't want politicians to be in a safe space. Politicians must be made to feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable with the questions they're forced to answer. They must squirm. If a politician is not prepared to sit in the spotlight, be questioned and to squirm as he gives his or her answers, then that politician should no account be allowed to wield the reins of power. Anyway, getting into the story. The SNP has been forced to row back on plans to hold secret leadership debates after all the candidates to replace Nicola Sturgeon as Scotland's First Minister demanded public access. Actually, not at first, it was only Kate Forbes. Uh, it was Ash Regan and Hamza Yousaf were happy, quite happy I'm afraid, uh, to, to keep it secret because one knows that her rabid independence view where everything is seen through the lens of independence would be a real turn off for the general public. And Hamza Yousaf, who knows that anyone who looks at him and his record would also likely say, that man's an idiot. And indeed, we do. Uh, but anyway, a spokesman for the party's ruling NEC said on Tuesday, the events were designed to be a safe space for members to question candidates. No one's attacking the members. The press being there is not an imposition on the members. It's an imposition on the three that are sitting on the table. That's why it was meant to be secret. 
Uh, they wanted no live TV cameras or reporters allowed in the room. But the party has now eased its position after criticism from both opposition parties and statements of support from candidates themselves. Finance Secretary Ms Forbes called for the media to be allowed access as well for the events to be streamed live to allow party members and the general public to watch. Why did these people not want the general public to watch the hustings of the person who will likely be their first minister? What are they so ashamed of? What are they so embarrassed by? It's not as though you've got three intellectual towering giants up there. Everybody knows what these people are like, but it'd be just nice to see them out in the wild doing their thing. Uh, anyway, she said, this is uh, Kate Forbes said, I fully believe in democracy and transparency. How odd that you would join the SNP then. Uh, and I think it would be a positive thing for our hustings to be live streamed to a, to a significantly bigger audience. The SNP has a membership of about 100,000 and most of the venues will only take a few hundred people. I don't believe any of the candidates have anything to hide. Huh, I bet they do. Uh, and in fact, it would give us a platform to set a positive example of how to have respectful, informed and various debates. Now, I reckon easily. Oh, there she is again. We did the joke. I'm not even going to do the joke about scraping the barrel. But you know, it's true. Uh, there he is. Look, there's him blowing bubbles because that's about the limit of the man. Somebody's bought him some bubble set and let him go and run in the park and blow bubbles uh, and he'll be happy. And if that's what he's doing, so will everyone else. There she is, the rabid independence, um, everything through the lens of independence woman. And it's so strange because she actually took a moral stance and she, she raised her game only to destroy it with the next thing she said, which is a shame. Uh, anyway, I hope that the members of the media can be given access to, as well as the national media, said Miss Forbes. Uh, I know a number of local media outlets will be very keen to cover town hall meetings that are happening on their doorstep. A spokesman for Mr Yousaf says he has no problem with the media seeing any of the hustings. Now, he says later, not at the time, adding that he already signed up to TV debates during the leadership campaign to allow non-members to see why Hamza is the top candidate to become Scotland's first minister. Oh, really? Really? You think people seeing you and questioning you on your record is going to help? Wow, you are delusional. Uh, but ultimately said the decision was one for the NEC. Oh yes, pass the blame. Pass the blame to the faceless ones. Miss Regan said she firmly... Why are they putting Ms Regan? Mrs Regan said she... It's almost as though they don't count her as a married woman. Are they saying that marriage is no longer important? I don't know. Anyway, they keep doing this Ms thing. Mrs Regan said that she firmly believes that media outlets should be given access, adding as candidates we have a duty to be held to scrutiny, whether you like it or not. Um, anyway, she said, I firmly believe we should allow access and ask that the media carry the proceedings fairly and fully, making them available to all. That would make a change. Anything with the SNP being fair, wouldn't it? Uh, the spokesman for the NEC said, we're in discussion with media outlets, making a request for access to our members' hustings events in Cumbernauld, and we're already looking at ways to make content available to our wider membership for the remainder of this series of events. Simple. Put a camera in there, record it, give them a live feed, let people stream it, let the news cover it if they want to. It's not hard. It's what you do every other day when you're doing every other subject. It's just this one thing that you desperately, desperately want to keep covered up. Why? Is it because the NEC is aware, like the rest of us, that there's three morons standing for leadership, none of whom, and I, I keep saying that it's hard to say, none of whom are anywhere near as good as Nicola Sturgeon it's and we all know how bad Nicola Sturgeon is, but they are they're not just a little bit worse. They're an order of magnitude worse. And it's sad that these people have decided that they would like to stand and no one. I was going to say no one in the SNP uh, with any kind of talent would stand, but there's no one in the SNP with any kind of talent. So you are, mate, you know, you are drinking from a very small pool here. But anyway. Um, it's not clear how many journalists would be allowed into the first event or from which outlets. Uh, earlier, the spokesman said SNP members are the lifeblood of our party and our movement. It is the members who will be voting for the next leader of the party. So the SNP NEC has designed the party hustings as a safe space for members to ask questions of the three candidates. Opposition parties took aim at the SNP before the shift in position, with Scottish Tory leader Douglas Ross claiming 
the party is once again hiding from proper scrutiny. The, I tell you, the best scrutiny I'd like to see is the top leadership of the SNP being scrutinised in court by a barrister over, and then you can have a whole list of things, um, but we'll start with the 600,000, then we'll look at the Sherry's debacle, then we'll look at why the NHS is so bad, and so like that. And then, you know, just actually start bringing legal proceedings against pol parliamentarians, politicians generally, who fail to deliver, who, who fail, not just fail to deliver on their promises, but fail spectacularly to improve the lives of the people for which they are supposedly representing. Uh, because if you did that, there'd be an awful lot of politicians rotting in Parkhurst. Anyway, getting back from that little aside, Shadow Scottish Secretary Ian Murray wrote to the SNP Chief Executive Peter Murrell, Mrs Sturgeon's Mr Sturgeon, and a, lot, a man who knows a lot more, we think, about that 600,000 than he is ever going to say. Unless, of course, he is, like I mentioned, in a court being questioned. But anyway, uh, he, uh, he was asked to express his opposition to the decision, saying it is vital that proper scrutiny takes place in a transparent contest. And there's nothing transparent about the SNP. They hide everything. They make sure that committees are um, only given certain facts. They're not allowed to question opposite views, things like that. So there's no, uh, there's no transparency in the SNP. Um, but anyway, there, there we are. I'm not going to go into the end of it. That is more or less the end of it. So they have been told that they wanted, uh, they, 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 the candidates were told it's going to be a private event. There's going to be no press. Uh, we don't want the media in there because there's going to be awkward questions and we don't want to embarrass you. Um, and then it's been turned around because the backlash has been immense. So good. Let's hold these buggers to account. And I shall round off there and come up and finish the video. It must really annoy the NEC that they're forced to uh, reveal the goings on at these hustings. They must be really ashamed of them if they actually want to hide them out of public view, out of scrutiny, away from the light. Why do they not want the light shone on these three morons? They know why. They know full, full why they do not want this covered. Because they know these three people just cannot do the job they're being asked to do. You have one who is completely divisive, one who is a moron, and one who is obsessed. Between the three of them, they couldn't do the job. For any one of them to do, it will be an unmitigated disaster. And that will be highlighted and exacerbated um, with the questions that will be asked of these people. The only way that they can do this uh, in the full light of media presence is if those questions in advance are thoroughly vetted so they know the questions that are going to be asked and they'll have pre-prepped answers ready uh, but even then they'd probably forget the answers because they're morons anyway uh, there's no point going on about it i just can't wait now to see what's going to happen i want to watch these events i want to show you how bad they can get so uh, thank you very much for watching this and do hit the subscribe button and do ring the bell and do not miss the hustings events because i'm going to re report on these uh, and we will look at how bad they truly are thanks for listening and until next time stay safe stay well please get yourself some popcorn and enjoy this damn show and goodbye <laughs>